Good morning, crafters, and happy first day of spring to ya. I hope it's beautiful and sunny wherever you are. I have been playing with some of the laces and trims and goodies from Creating with Details, and just playing around, uh, kind of had Easter in mind, and just watching a few videos, um, and one of them inspired me to do this project and you're probably wondering what on earth are these things well I'll show you in a minute but I also wanted to share with you I was playing with some of those plastic Easter eggs and uh, I just messed around and and used um, some of the items some some scrap trims that I had uh, left over from some of the laces from creating details and these were literally in my um, scrap bag or box. So what I did is I took the plastic egg and rather than just paint it, I did paper mache over top of it to make it really sturdy and hard because you know they join here and there is that that weakness where it could fall apart. Well I didn't want that and I didn't want a big hot glue glob laying there so I decided to paper mache it and while I was doing that another idea came across my little brain and I thought how cool would it be to make um, the paper mache kind of look like a cracked egg and then you know paint it like a creamy white I used um, this paint on these projects that I made um, it is warm white um, kind of an off-white color that I painted all the surfaces with just to get rid of that glaring white. So I, I paper mache it it um, with two or three coats, let it dry, and then I just got out my little um, jar of scraps and started cutting them up into pieces and playing with them and just added all of these little pieces. Then I add, added some of the um, let me zoom in just a little bit. Here we go. A little bit more. I added some of this, um, these flat backs, um, strings that May is carrying over at Creating with Details and this gorgeous cabochon. Absolutely loved this. And it was the perfect size for this egg because it had the same shape. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still dealing with this cold. And then I had some of these little tiny um, chiffon flowers, and I used some of the um, flat bat pearls from this awesome kit that Creating with Details has. And this has so many different sizes, and it comes fully loaded just like this, and it's $6.99. You're not going to find a better value. Um, these are just invaluable, and they're that, um, you know, that off-white color. Uh, that is really good on just about any project. So I added that and then up at the top I just um, tied a little bow out of Sari Ribbon and that's really about all I did with it but I just wanted to show that to you just to share that you know you don't have to have you know a whole lot of yardage um, to make small items like this. I may put um, something up here so it will hang. I even thought about attaching a tassel to the bottom. Um, if you use a sharp pokey object such as an awl, it'll go right through there. You just have to go really slowly and carefully. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll play with that and see what happens. So on to these mysterious looking items that I have laying here. I watched a video by a little shabby chic and I will put the link to that video in the description box below. She created a hot air balloon which was absolutely stunning. Stunning! And I thought, you know, I've got to try one of those and I still am going to try one of the big ones. Um, sorry about the dog in the background. Um, evidently she hears a leaf blowing by. So I decided when I was playing with the um, plastic eggs, I thought, you know, I could take just the top half of one of the eggs and I could make the balloon part and make a little miniature 
hot air balloon. This I want to use for the basket is the top off of a perfume bottle. Any kind of top or plastic piece that you find. Um, that's why I save a lot of things that other people would consider to be garbage. I did paper mache both of these. This was like a hot pink um, cap, so I paper mache it, let it dry, and then I used that same paint um, to give it just a, a coat. And you can see how sturdy these things are. Um, even if it falls, it's not going to break. At the top, I just took my little pokey tool and put a hole in there so that I can attach a hanger because I want these um, to hang like in my windows. And, and I plan on doing a few more of these um, because I just love them. I, I just think they're adorable. These would be cute um, in a little girl's room. They would be cute. I was thinking how cute this would be if... Uh, you know, a guy was going to propose to his girlfriend and he hung these little hot air balloons and put the, the ring inside. I thought that would be cute. So, to get started, what I've done, what I'm going to do is to take some of this lace right here. I'm going to work on the basket part first. And this is a piece of lace and I'm going to show you um, how you can take I'm going to zoom back out how you can take a boo-boo and this was um, I tried to make a lace cuff this was my original intent and I realized after I did it that it was just really bulky and I didn't like the way it looked so rather than you know chucking it I thought I'm just gonna cut off these pieces and, and reuse them on something else so that's what I did and I am just going to take my hot glue gun let me even this up a little bit and I'm just going to kind of finger gather this using the hot glue around the edge of the basket Now where you see these edges here um, at the top, I'm going to cover that so you won't you won't see that messiness when it's done. You just kind of finger pleat it as you go along like that. And the good thing is is that being that this is not a really big project. Um, unlike the hot air balloon that a little shabby chic did, oh, I have to tell you that thing is just gorgeous. Um, it won't take a whole lot of time to do the ruffling this way. Now, if if you want, you could do, you know, you could gather it, do a running stitch and gather it, pre-gather it. It might come out a little more even that way, but I just wanted to do a quick little video and give you some ideas of how you can um, take found objects, different objects that you might not think have a purpose and create something really cute and different. And also how to um, save a boo-boo because -boo. Uh, as crafters we all have these fabulous ideas that uh, you know we think are going to work and we just go for it and then we get done and we go what was I thinking that is not good I don't like that at all um, but rather than toss it you can pull it apart and do something different with it because sometimes an idea just doesn't work out the way we think it's going to and you have to kind of go with a plan B. So that's how I'm reusing my um, cuff boo boo because I love this lace and there was no way I was going to waste it. So I'm just going to cut it right here. 
And like I said, this netting, once you get it all glued on, you can go back and trim all of this up. Get it a little more evenly distributed. Or even on the top, not distributed. So there is the first layer on the basket. Now I did want to cover up the bottom of it since it is going to be hanging. And to do that, I am going to take one of these little small doilies that I had in my stash and I am going to glue that right on the bottom so that when you see it while it's hanging, it's going to look finished and not like uh, it was a cup you painted white, which it was, but we don't necessarily want it to look like that. So when I do this, I'm going to just kind of um, glue it in four spots, like on, e on the opposite directions across from the center, and then kind of gather it from there so that it lays smoothly. Um, because the doily is obviously bigger than the cup. So, I'm just going to do it like that. And then I will distribute the um, fullness a little more evenly by getting, you know, the four sides done. So, after you do the four sides, you're going to have these little wing thingies. And what I'm going to do is just kind of finger gather them and just put a little bit of glue and just kind of finger gather them loosely so that they aren't sticking out anymore like that. And this, you know, you can take a lot of time doing this. You could even, if you wanted to, um, before you put this on to reduce some of the fullness, you could even cut out a couple of these little segments on the doily um, to make it lay flatter uh, because it's not going to unravel. You're using hot glue to put it on there. So that's another option that you could use to uh, make this lay just a little bit flatter. But I just put the hot glue down and, down and just use my fingers to try and give it that more fitted look. And again, if you use this on a bigger, you know, if you had a bigger um, basket, uh, this probably, this step wouldn't be necessary uh, if you found one that would fit the uh, circumference of your cup. It would be a little bit less work, but it's not that big of a deal, so. All right, so there we go. We have the bottom covered so that when you see it from the bottom, you don't see any yuckiness. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and go right around the edge of the cup and trim off this excess. And if you have the little pieces that are sticking up like here, just dab some glue on them. Like that. Now in order to make a hot air balloon, it's going to have to be able to hang. So um, I have decided that this gorgeous braided trim that's also available at Creating with Details is what I am going to use just to make this hang. So I figured I'm going to use like four small pieces and just kind of guess, you know, how long I want the length between the basket and the balloon. So I'll be going one end in here and one end in here. Now I had taken some sari ribbon and uh, gathered, just gathered it using a running stitch. And well, first I took a section of the sari ribbon and ironed it out and then just kind of accordion folded it 
like this and did several layers and then just took my scissors and starting right about here just kind of cut it into a petal shape so that when you open it up they all stay together and then I just took a running stitch along the um, base of that little string kind of like a paper dowel cut out really and just gathered it up now again this is rough on the edges but what I'm going to do is apply it right here to the edge of the little basket to give it kind of a, a ruffle. It's kind of a shabby because this will fray. Um, I'm out of frame again, sorry. This will fray eventually. I mean, it's not gonna, if you don't touch it a lot, it won't fray a lot. But I am just going to, and I have two pieces of this because I originally did these because I was making some. Uh, shabby chic flowers and I picked this up and thought wow that would make a cute ruffle so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna run a bead of glue and I have another piece of this that I'm gonna put around the other side and these are so easy to make it just just takes a couple of minutes to cut out your your petal shape you know accordion fold it and cut out your petal shape and uh, just go to town and I love the the shabby feel that these uh, these little sari ribbons give I, I, I'm a huge huge fan of sari ribbon you can probably tell because I think I put some in just about every project that I do just because I love that uh, the look that it gives there we go now again you can take your your scissors. See how cute that is? Use it that little ruffle. And just trim this up. Oops. I have got glue strings all over my scissors. So I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. That's the one thing about using the sorry ribbon is that it does make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. It's worth it. Now, these pearls that I showed you um, on that egg, I'm going to take and glue right around the edge here to kind of finish off that edging. And I'm thinking I may use another doily to line the inside of the basket just to finish it off a little bit. Not something that you have to do, but I think it might work. So we're going to try it when I get done with this. But before I put the, um, the doily in there, I am going to attach my little ropes so that I can hide the edges of that inside the doily. That's my plan and we'll just see how it works out because I'm just doing a play video today. I it is it's sunny, it's bright, it's pretty and I wanted to uh, just create something to me that's kind of springy. I mean when you think of hot air balloons you think of a beautiful sunny day and and even though it's chilly here, which is the reason that I have on the sweater, um, it still is the first day of spring. So that's where my mind took me today. And I'm just going to cut this off. Oops. So 
So there you have it. That is the base of my little basket. And it's kind of cool because when you look at it, the um, the doily kind of makes it look like a basket type material. Didn't even realize that when I was doing it, but that's just a little added bonus. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, use this cording that I just showed you, and I'm going to cut. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe three inch pieces. Let's see. Uh, maybe, let's just go to four. That way, if it is too long, <clears throat> excuse me, voice again, I can uh, trim it down because you'll have to play with it and see um, just where you want it to be once you get the top of the hot air balloon done. And this cord, um, when you cut it, because it is, you know, braided, it will separate, but that's not a problem because you're going to be gluing those edges together anyway, or the ends together um, on the inside of the balloon and the basket. So... Here we go. Okay, so again, I'm just going to try to find, like, you know, visualize this as, as this is the center and just do, like, north, south, east, west kind of thing. So I'm going to just eyeball this and attach this cording right in there. And this is why I wanted to do the um, rope, let me call it, before I tried putting the doily in because I don't want to see where I've glued it. So I'm going to go directly opposite that one and glue my next rope in place. And then we're going to do the other two sides the same way. Just kind of eyeball where it is in between those two. Now we have our little ropes that attach to the top of the hot air balloon. Now let's try out my theory of the little doily inside the basket. And this is where I think we're going to have to do a little nip and tuck because the fullness is not going to let it... Uh, lay correctly. So I'm just going to kind of cut some slits in the edge of this, like every couple of um, oh, components, I guess, edges. And then we'll see where this, this enables me um, when I get it inside because I'm going to glue the bottom down. Once I get the bottom glued down, if I need to, um, I can distribute the fullness or I can cut pieces of this out so it'll um, lay flatter. And that's all I did is just cut these little slits. And if I need to, I can cut these right out and just join it that way to cut out some of the fullness. So, let's just glue the bottom first. This is kind of a tight fit. Actually, you know what? I have another idea. We don't have to have all of that depth 
in there. So I'm thinking maybe we could just make it like a little basket and have these little ruffled edges kind of come up over the top of the pearl trim. It still leaves a little indentation here. I think that's what I'm going to do. I like that better. See, when you start playing, you look at something and go, that's what I was talking about. You think, oh, that's going to be a good idea. And then you get to doing it. And it's like, oh, no, not so much. So I'm just taking, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just gluing where I snipped it, right to where I snipped it, to the top of the um, pearl trim. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. Um, right here, I'm just gluing this where I snipped it right to the um, pearl trim. Still does the same thing. It accomplishes hiding the... Um, you want to keep your rope straight when you're gluing. Hiding the, um, the rope. And there was also... A little bit of what I considered to be, you know, it looked kind of unfinished on the top of the basket. So this kind of kills two birds with one stone, so to speak. And that tongue just got all tripped up and stupid. And I'm just kind of going around and distributing that fullness. Um, like right here, you can see there's a couple of layers, but that's okay. That's just fine. It, it, it you know, it lends itself to the fullness, and everywhere there's a, a rope. I'm just kind of going to make sure that it doesn't get twisted up inside there. I'm just tacking it down with the glue gun, distributing the fullness. There we have it. Now, in uh, a little Shabby Chic's video, her hot air balloon, um, when she finished it, she took one of those uh, battery-operated candles and put it in the basket of her hot air balloon. And I absolutely love this idea. And with this, the depth of this, and you probably can't tell, maybe you can, this is just big enough to hold one of those battery operated candles. I don't have one right now, but um, it just makes it look so cool at night because it's like a little night light. And you could use this as a you know, you could use it as a night light then like in a little girl's room who might be afraid of what's in the closet. Um, it'll just give a little nice soft little glow. So there's the basket finished. Now, what I'm going to do for the top is, what did I do with the other doily? Oh, here it is. I am going to put the center hole of this little doily. I'm going to glue that right to the hole that I made in the top of the balloon. I'm just go around it so I don't clog up the hole because that's where I'm going to put in a hanger so that this can hang and just put it on like that. You can still see the hole there. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to stretch and glue all the way around so that it's smooth and it covers the entire egg. Because these are crocheted and again go in opposite directions so that you can distribute any fullness that you may have evenly around the egg. And uh, the nice thing about these crocheted doilies is that they do give enough so that you can stretch it without distorting them. 
And I'm just going to continue to do this all the way around. Just stretching and pulling. Making sure that I'm not getting my hole covered up. Next, I'm going to go in between the areas that I've glued and start gluing, stretching and gluing like that. And that way you can distribute this fullness evenly around the egg. Um, and one of the other reasons that I did the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the um, paper mache on the eggs is because I knew I wanted to use um, the hot glue gun on here and being that the eggs are plastic um, I tried initially to use um, gesso and paint and it's still like if you hit nick it with something it, the paint just comes right off and also the uh, glue is not going to hold very well with your fabric when you're doing it if you don't, uh, you know, have a good hard surface for it to hold on to. Now I'm on the last area of the egg, and this this is where it takes a little bit of coaxing um, and stretching to get it in place, and just hold that for a couple of seconds. And then the same thing here, you just kind of got to stretch and pull and glue and hold. Now, if your edges don't, your, your um, doily edges don't come all the way to the edge of the balloon, that's okay because I'm going to add another trim to this. And then just go back wherever you see the spot that you think looks suspect to coming loose and just add a little bit more glue. So there we have the top of the balloon covered and it sort of gives that netting look which I liked. Now what I'm going to do on this balloon is use this, um, this is one of, I think this is a fairly new trim. Um, that creating with details has and it has this movement these little dangles on here which I thought would be perfect on the edge of the hot air balloon so that it, when it hangs it has that movement get in the camera Robin like that see so I'm gonna again take my glue gun and just on the edge of the doily just start gluing the trim. Now May sells these in um, these trims in one yard lengths and uh, when, you, when you start working with smaller pieces or if you use them on smaller pieces you get a lot of use out of a yard. may not sound like much but when you start creating oh boy it really does it goes a long way and like I said that egg um, that I showed you at the beginning of the video was all pieces of lace from creating with details that I just cut apart and I never throw scraps away so um, there's enough in there to actually do quite a few smaller projects and then I'm just gonna overlap this just a bit and cut this off in between these little dangles. You can also cut these apart right here on the lace. You can just cut this right here and just have individual little dangle components that you can add on to other pieces. Love this lace. Love it. I'm just going to glue that down. 
As a matter of fact, I think what I am going to do, whoops, that wasn't quite dry and I moved it, is I am going to do that very thing on this hot air balloon. It gives it the movement, but I want a little bit more, um, you know, like freedom for it to fly. I think I want to do that. No, maybe not. I think I'm going to leave it alone. But I do want to take where these two pieces come together right here and just add a dot of glue just to hold those pieces together so they're not flopping in the breeze. So there you have the little danglies on the top of the hot air balloon. Now I am going to take, <coughs> excuse me, I think what I'll do is take some more of this cording. I am so backwards. Um, and just kind of finish off that edge a little bit. Yep. I need another glue stick. Oh, here it is. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Just going to finish this off a little bit on that edge. And it ties in with the faux rope that we're using too. So it kind of gives it a little bit of continuity. And it also hides um, any speed bumps that you might have in your attaching your lace like I had right there. I think, I swear that's what embellishments were made for, is to hide our um, little oopsies. Whoa, glue strings everywhere. Now, I'll show you what I mean about the oopsies and embellishments. That's yucky. So, I'm going to cover it up with something. Let's see what I have. Let's see here. We have a little rosebud. Why not? We'll just glue that right on there. Hide that little joint. And I'm going to get my tweezers out because I'm going to need them to try and do what I'm going to do next. I want to put a little flat back pearl in the center of that rosebud right there and these are kind of tiny and with um, the wonderful present that I got from my daughter yesterday of getting my uh, getting a manicure I have to learn how to do things a little bit differently because Number one, I can't grab things with my nails. And number two, I don't want to get them all messy. So thank you, honey. Oops. So there you can see I just added a little um, flat back pearl in there just to contribute to the shabbiness. You may add some other little things on the top. We'll see. But 
Right now, I think what I'm going to do, no, I'm going to finish the top of this before I attach it. Let's see. Um, I also got some of these uh, little doves that Creating with Details carries out because I thought, well, you know, it's springy, there's birds and doves. So I think I'm going to try putting a couple of those around on the edge of the balloon. Kind of something like that, maybe. Oops. Maybe even. Well, I know. Let's do that. I'll put. No, I can't do that because they don't fly in the right direction. Let's see. Maybe we'll just use a couple of evenly dispersed. We'll take some of these flat back pearls and just kind of evenly disperse them around the hot air balloon. This is what you call thinking on the fly. Um, just trying to uh, add to it and give it that little shabbiness. Try to find uh, enough of these. There's definitely enough of them, but some of these flat back pearls to add around the edge of the hot air balloon. And this is another reason why I needed to get my tweezers out because I can't pick a dose up. It was such a treat for me yesterday. My husband um, is in the process of uh, redoing just about every room in my house and it's a hot mess up in here. I'm not even playing. And the noise level and the dirt and the dust and the just total chaos. She goes, hey mom, you want to get out of there? And I went, okay, where are we going? So she took me to get on meals. She got hers done too. So we went together and I'm dropping these pearls everywhere. Well, we'll go with that see if I need more. I'll dig them out. Um, so she took me to get that done and I'm so pleased. Even though I have to learn how to reuse my fingers. First I told her, I said, you have to be nuts. Um, I can't work with nails. How, how will I do anything with nails on? Well, you figure it out. I see lots of other ladies with gorgeous nails crafting. I thought, you, you're a big girl. You got this. You can do this. See, I'm just attaching these uh, flat back curls at intervals around the edging there just to give it a little more texture and depth, a little more interest. And I noticed that not all of these flat backs are the same size, but you know what? That's okay too. It just gives more interest when it moves. And I thought this would be really, really pretty. And I think I think the one that uh, Little Shabby Chic did, um, she added some crystals, which if you hung it in a window, would just throw prisms all over the place. And how pretty would that be? I just didn't have um, any crystals small enough for this project. So there it goes. I don't know where it went. We'll get somewhere. I'll find them later. Um, how pretty would that be hanging in a window? We'll just give that. I love. I love the prisms that crystals um, give to when the sun hits them. It's just almost magical. So I may go back if I, you know, make some strands or find some that would. Uh, work on here. I may go back and add them later. That's the nice thing about, you know, when you make your own things, you can, you can buy these. You know, I'm sure that you can find these for sale. Um, but when you make your own, you can customize it. You can do it however you want it. You can use your colors. And, and I, while I was looking at this, I actually got out some um, some pink trims and stuff and I thought, you know, this would be adorable in a nursery. You could even make a mobile, 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 
over a baby's crib um, with a bunch of these and with the movement it would uh, it would be great for the baby and do them in different colors you know like some of the soft pastels or do it in blues um, if you have a little boy or pink so you could even go gender neutral and just do it um, like I am um, with a neutral neutral colors. I like the neutral colors because then I don't have to change all of my accessories if I want to change out the decor, if I want to change colors. Um, I don't necessarily have to change all of my accessories because they will go with any color. Jeez, that really, I'm thinking about this as a mobile and that would be really, really cute for a baby's crib or bassinet. Okay, see that just gave it that little extra texture. So now what I'm going to do is show you how I'm going to make this hang and then I'm going to think about what else I want to put on this hot air balloon, um, if anything, uh, to make it look a little shabbier, I think. Now I think that would be too much. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. Think about that. And I'm definitely going to try to use those doves too. And then I have these little um, pearl sprays that might be able to be used on here. Nah, it looks like a spaceship antenna. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this hang. And for this you'll need some, um, just a couple of things. I have um, a piece, let me zoom in just a little bit, because these are smaller items. I have a piece of chain, just regular. You could take an old broken necklace, um, anything like that to make this. You don't need it very long. Or you could have it long depending on, like, especially if you wanted to hang these balloons at different heights. So you'd need different, length, uh, different lengths of chain. And then you're going to need either a piece of wire. Um, like this, I have uh, an eye pen that I'm going to use, um, I'm going to feed it through the top of the hot air balloon to attach the chain to. And then the bottom is going to feed down in through this like, like that. But before I do that, I got out some of these little jewelry findings um, that I had um, in use when I'm making jewelries. And this is like a little separator, this is like a little bead cap, and then just a little ball. Um, duck on it, Robin Stein frame um, that I'm going to put at the very top. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to feed the um, the round end of the eye pen. I'm going to have that be at the top of the balloon. I'm just going to kind of straighten this out because they do get bent a little bit. And I'm going to feed that right down through the top of the balloon. No, I'm not. I'm going backwards again. See? You got to watch me. I get lost. Right at my own desk, I get lost. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the spacer right on top of that hole right here. Like that. Keeping the hole open. And then I'm going to, on top of that, glue this little um, bead cap. Like so. Get it even. Then I'm going to take the um, this little ball and just stick it on the end of the eye pen. And now I'm going to stick this down through the top of the balloon. See, it gives it that little um, 
kind of like a little crown effect. Now I'm going to um, flip this over. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And I can straighten that out a, a little bit. That didn't pull very well. This is another one of those areas where you really should, uh, you might want to try at least uh, E6000 to hold these metal components just so they don't move um, if they're bumped or jostled. Just like that. Now I'm going to flip this over. I should have done this before I attached the um, the dangles. It probably would have made it a little bit easier. I'm going to take my um, wire cutters and I'm just going to, you're probably not going to be able to see me do this, but actually, no, I already glued it. Um, I'm just going to take my wire cutters and snip off a piece of that wire. And then I have a, it's all still a little bit too long. I have another um, bead cap that I'm going to attach to the inside um, with some hot glue just to give it more stability. And I'll show you after I get this done because there's no camera angle that's going to allow me to show you. Um, what I'm doing and just make sure that it stays straight. So this is what I did on the inside. See I just cut that um, that wire off and just added another B cap with some hot glue so that secures this while it's hanging and it won't come apart once you attach your chain to it. Now on the chain, you could um, very easily, just making sure this is dry, okay, before I go messing with it, you could attach, um, let me zoom back up, you could attach some, some little um, pearls or cabochons or charms, whatever you wanted to do with it. And I'm going to leave this chain. Um, the length that it is because I'm not sure how long I want it to be when I hang it. So I am going to take my needle nose pliers and you could attach a jump, another jump ring on here but I can't find mine so I am just going to just take my needle nose pliers and hold on to the top and just bend that loop open just to not be able to slide my chain in. And then at the other end, you know, you can put, um, you know, another uh, jump ring. And I'm just going to use my needle nose to, uh, easier said than done, to close this back up so the chain doesn't fall off. Probably should have let this dry better. There we go. So now we have the ability to hang it just like that. And when it hangs, it'll spin, and all these little danglies will give it movement. So I'm thinking now let's attach the basket first. Now I'm not going to try to embellish. Um, you know what? I am going to cut these loose a little bit because I just think this needs more movement. It's a little too caged in. It's one of those things where you go, hmm, do I or don't I? Do I or don't I? I do. See how that moves a little more freely? Oops. Well, you can't see it if it's not in frame. Um, a little moves a little more freely when you um, just release those dangles and all I'm doing is just 
see where these are joined and where this little dangle comes down I am just cutting these right here just right where those two like flowers are joined and then cutting take on it um, one of those off and just trim it see how that loosens it up it gives it that uh, not so caged in look let me see if I can zoom in maybe you can see it better with what I'm doing okay so I am just taking my scissors and right here right in between these two flowers I'm just trimming those two little pieces right there and then here where the dangle comes down I'm not going to cut both of them I'm just going to cut one of them so that it hangs down a little bit lower and it gives kind of that um, we got some short some long whoops I'm looking at it and you're not able to see it that way you've got them at um, different lengths I'm just going to continue to do that all the way around Sorry if I got quiet, I have to make sure that my big old scissors don't uh, cut something where it shouldn't be. Oops. There, now it moves a little more freely with a cut like that. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of fold my dangles back and I'm going to take my basket and just kind of, um, this is the part I didn't think out very well and it's probably a part where you could use two hands, but I'm just going to lay them both on their side and these tools out of the way. I'm just going to lay them both on their side facing each other and just kind of find See, I have the little rosette here, so I kind of want that in between um, at least two of the ropes so it kind of looks like it has a front. Don't have to do that, but it's just what I'm going to do. And then, whoops, make sure your rope doesn't twist. Yeah, I'm going to glue that there. you got to start somewhere, so I'm just going to start with the first one right there. And as you can tell, I have not made one of these before because I'm thinking on the fly and trying. I can't see where I glued. Just trying out different ideas. And that's the fun part of, of crafting, creating. It's all yours, it's all unique, and you can do whatever you want because it's yours. So now that I have that on there, I'm going to do the same thing, or attempt to do the same thing that I did on the bottom. I'm going to keep the the components um, lying next to each other. Keep that straight, your rope here, and then just take the second rope and go right directly across from that and add a little dab of glue and attach the other end of. Jeez Louise, eyesight's failing. Okay, let's try that again. Keeping this straight so I can see where I want it. Okay, I see where it goes now. I'm just going to attach my ropes in that manner. Now, if you wanted to, you could finish off the inside of your um, hot air balloon before you. Um, did this part of it but you know I figure it's the inside of a balloon it's not supposed to be fancy so we're just gonna go with it it's it's smooth and it's painted so let's see this one is gonna go I have to make sure I'm getting this straight because it'd be just like when you have these going all crooked and like askew and then wonder why my balloon not hanging right that one right 
there. And if you do have an extra pair of hands, they might come in handy at uh, this particular point. Although this is awfully small, it might be kind of hard for two people to um, get their fingers in there. Or you could even use um, clamps, you know, those little baby clamps. You could even use some of those to hold it um, while you get it centered. have one last rope to attach on the opposite side. I didn't cut these, um, the ropes where I just cut them off in four inch sections um, because I wanted to give a little room in between the um, the basket and the hot air balloon and so there you have the two pieces joined together now like I said you could um, and I will I'm sure it will further embellish this I think although I do kind of like the simplicity of it but I do want to find some place where I can use some of these doves and I was thinking when I was holding this, what it would it look like if I attached a dove, like right there. Or, so you don't want to put it on the top of the hot air balloon because this is a flat surface and this is a rounded surface. So I think what I'm going to do is right here on the base of the rope, I'm just going to, oops add a little tiny dove. He hitched a ride on the hot air balloon. See? And I think I'll do one on the opposite side as well. I don't want to put them on all four because that would just look overdone, I think. Put one on the opposite side. I just love these little things. These are so great for mixed media and projects like this they're just um, the perfect size and the extra added little oh I don't know frilliness softness so there you have it ladies that's basically you know how I envision making a hot air balloon and and I will put links in the description box below on uh, where you can get the materials and also the inspiration video um, that gave me the idea to try one of these. So I hope you like it. I hope you're inspired to try something like that of your own. If you do like it, please give me a thumbs up, uh, share, and subscribe. And until the next video, ladies, be blessed, be creative, be kind, be supportive, and have a wonderful day and happy spring. Bye-bye.